And welcome back YouTube, this is Boosterbox Buster here with another video. Today I'm going to share with you six different Naruto collectible card game super rares. Four of these cards I recently picked up in online auctions, the other two I've had in my collection for a while. I have just been waiting for the right time to share the cards with you. Without further introduction, let's get into this. So the first card up... From Path to Hokage, we have the Super Rare Naruto. It is Lightning, Turn 1. Not often you see a Turn 1 uh, Super Rare. 1 0 healthy, 3 0 injured, and here is the effect. Imposter, valid. When this ninja receives any damage, flip a ninja blade coin. If it's heads, reduce the damage by 1. Now, it doesn't say per damage, so if he gets hit by two pieces of damage, I believe he can only flip it for one of the two pieces of damage. Like if he's the head ninja and your opponent beats you, best you in an outstanding victory. Um, however, it is valid, so if he were to take damage when he's injured or healthy, it still works. And... Honestly, this was a pretty good effect for a uh, for a early super rare in the game. Honestly, I think this card was pretty decent. Uh, now, obviously, nowadays this card is 100% useless, but when it first came out, this was probably one of the better Naruto's to have. Believe it or not, that is Naruto Imposter Super Rare Path to Hokage. And then up next. From Path to Hokage, we have Sasuke Super Rare. Fire, turn 1, 4 0 healthy. That was pretty, pretty powerful for a turn 1 back then. 1 0 injured. Individual play. This ninja, ah, this ninja cannot be sent out to battle in the same team as Ginning or lower rank ninjas. So to balance that uh, 4 0 starting attack, uh, he can only be sent out with uh, Jonin or higher rank ninja. So, like, you'd have to wait you typically until turn 3 or 4 to really be able to put him with anybody. Because, they're, especially back then, I, I think Kakashi, Rock Lee, or uh, Kakashi, my guy, um, Zabuza, those type of characters were your. Uh, Jonin and higher. So he he was really limited to what he could do, but to have a just to have a turn one four power out that was pretty powerful. And honestly, you could you could get a pretty cheap battle reward early on in the game with this guy. Um, his effect is not valid, so if he's injured, he becomes a one zero. But you could team him up. But at that point, you're probably just going to use him for jump blocking. Um, yeah. So that is Sasuke Uchiha, Path to Hokage, super rare. And then, up next, we have... Anbu from Coils of the Snake, super rare. So this is Fire, turn 5, zero hand cost, which is pretty good for uh, turn 5. Most turn 5s and up have a hand cost. 4-2 healthy, 2-1 injured. A faceless expert, valid this ninja can be put in play even if there is a ninja with the same name in your village. So, this kind of broke the, uh, the one named card. Uh, in the one named ninja per village rule. Which honestly, uh, was broken multiple times after this card, but this was really the first card to do it. So you could have up to three Anbu in the same village, because they are... It's not a specific ninja, it is a type, you know, it's a ranking of ninja almost. It's like the Secret Service of the Hokage. Just think of it that way, the Secret Service of the Hokage. And honestly, it's pretty cool. Um, this card was... 
Uh, honestly, I, I, n nobody really ran it, but nobody really had it around my area. I think there was only like one person that had it, and they somehow got two of them, but they rarely were able to get two Anbu out in the same matchup. So, yeah, just think of it that way. Um, decent effect. Decent stats. No, no hand costs, which is very nice, but still... Uh, well overpowered by today's game, but back then, pretty powerful. That is Anbu, super rare. And then we get probably the most money that I've ever spent on a single card in my entire of purchasing individual cards. Anko, for whatever reason, still demands a lot of money. Even back then, she demanded a lot of money. And she still demands a lot of money to this day. She is turn 3, 0 hand cost, lightning, 4 1 healthy, 4 0 injured, so obviously I had ninja choice. And let's take a look at her effect. Forbidden Jutsu. When this ninja becomes the user of a jutsu card, water symbols of the jutsu cost may be paid by lightning symbols instead. So this was pretty powerful. Because that means that you could splash her uh, into a water deck or a lightning deck or a lightning water hybrid deck, and she works really well in any of those three. Um, being able to pay water symbol with lightning symbol back then was pretty powerful because there were some pretty decent water jutsus. Um, not so much until set four, but set. Set 2 and 1 did have a few that were decent. Um, this is, I believe this is the only Super Rare Anko ever printed. I don't think they ever printed another Super Rare Anko, so that's probably why she demands so much money. Um, she's also very scarce. There aren't a lot of Ankos that are readily available on the secondary market. There, You have to kind of search for them. So yeah, I'm very happy to add Anko to my collection, even though it did cost more than I wanted to pay. And the next two are cards that I've had in my collection. I just recently, uh... I just was waiting for the proper time to share it with you, because they are... Uh, Dream Legacy cards, and I didn't want to share those with you until I opened up a couple boxes. Or at least one box. So the first card I want to share with you is the Epic Manda, one of my favorite super rares in my collection. He's water, turn 8, 1 hand cost, 9-0 healthy, 8-0 injured, 100% head ninja all the way. Uh, uh, risky bet. At the beginning of your turn, if you do not have Orochimaru in your village, discard one of your in-play ninjas except this ninja. So basically, uh, this card actually did not, uh, you did not have to use summoning jutsu to summon this card, which is good. Um, but, if your opponent was able to get rid of your Orochimaru while you still had Manda on the field, like if they targeted Orochimaru with a specific jutsu, got rid of him, Manda's still in the field, then you essentially just imagine it being a tribute for Manda. Basically, he goes up. He's like, are you a Rochimaru? And he's just like, no. And he just goes, eats him. You know, Th that's what I imagine Manda doing to the, uh, to the village there. So yeah, I is it a good card? Not really. But, it's a symbolic card, the very first Manda ever printed, and a f just a really, really cool artwork of Manda on this card. And the last card, we end it on a Jutsu. It's a Amaterasu. Two fire. Requirements Itachi. Target one ninja battling, battling, or one Jutsu card being played, sorry. In fact, negate and discard the target, then look at all the cards in your opponent's hand to discard every Jutsu card with the same name as the target. So, if you're a opponent happens to play a powerful jutsu card and has two of them, 
one in their hand, one being activated, you activate this, you negate it, and you can destroy, and you get a free look at your opponent's hand. Even if the card isn't in there, you still get a free look, which is always great for information gathering. On top of that, if they do happen to have, let's say they have Shadow Clone Jutsu, two of them, guess what? That, shadow, that second one is gone. They can't play it. Now, the odds of your opponent having two of the same jutsu in the hand is probably relatively small, but if nothing else, you get a free look at your opponent's hand. The downside to this card is it's Atachi only, and it costs two specific fires, so it's harder to run, and a uh, two or three element deck, and you have to have Atachi. If you don't have Atachi and you have this card in your hand, literally this card is just good for charging. If you have Atachi, but you don't have this card, then you obviously can't play the card. Easy as that. Um, yeah, so Amaterasu, good but not great. There's obviously better choices at the time, but if you didn't have those better choices, this card was definitely worth running if you had Atachi, which at the time, there was only one, and he was also super rare. They like to do that. They like to put a super rare Jutsu and a super rare Ninja of the same type in the same set, and you need... If you have the Jutsu, it's useless without the Ninja. So yeah, that, they, they like to do that. Just look at set one. It was Haku and his Ice ice Mirrors. Uh, set three had Gara and his a lot of his uh, Saiyan Jutsus. Yeah, just, just a lot of fun with the uh, Super Rare Ninja required to play some Super Rare... Uh, Jutsus. But that is Amaterasu. So those are the six cards that I've added to my collection. I gotta say I'm super happy with all of them. I'm trying, I'm really focusing on set 1 through 12 right now. So that that's my main focus to try to complete. Um, the earlier sets I really want to get done first, and then try to work my way up as the uh, as time goes on. Until next time, this has some Booster Box Buster. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. If you want to see future content like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to check out the past video on my channel, this should be popping up on the screen right around now. Is that everything? Oh, also leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite card was from this video. Until next time, this is Booster Max Buster, and I'm signing out. Peace.